The Bird Ether 9 is our 2021 Trail Bike of the Year. If you're looking for a bike that will happily cover long distances while still being more than happy railing turns and charging down the steepest of tracks, the Ether 9 could well be the bike for you. It's not just how well the bike rides that I loved, but also how easy it is to live with the bike. Add in exceptional value for money and the ability to spec the bike as you like, and hopefully you can see why the bike did so well in this year's test. I will, of course, expand on all these points throughout the following review. The Ether 9 is a 130mm travel aluminium 29er trail bike. It sits alongside the Ether 9C, which is basically the carbon equivalent of this bike, and it's the bigger wheeled version of the Ether 7, which came third in last year's test. We love that bike, but we were wishing at the time for slightly bigger hoops. If you prefer 27.5 inch wheels, check out our review, the link is in the description. The Ether 9 also looks similar to the AM9, Bird's 150mm travel 29er enduro bike. But there are subtle differences, aside from the travel, that separate these two bikes. Before I continue with the Ether's review, I'll give you some context to this year's Trail Bike of the Year test. You may have noticed in the news some global events that have impacted on bike availability, and this did make getting hold of bikes fairly tricky. I tested eight bikes this year. Usually, we stick to a 3,000 to 3,000 pound price limit, and that was our intention this year. However, as time went on, we had to relax this a little, so some of the bikes crept over this price limit. Likewise, the impact of Brexit wasn't clear until the new year, which again impacted on the cost of some of the bikes in this test. When this happened, my reviews focused on the frame more than the kit, and I endeavoured to comment on models of the bike which either hit the price point but I couldn't get, or gave other options within the range. It's not an ideal situation, but neither is a global pandemic, and we won't go into the politics of Brexit. I'd also like to give a big thanks to Bike Park Wales. Testing has been trickier this year thanks to group ride restrictions, and so Bike Park Wales kind offer to let us use their tracks for work purposes whilst they were closed was really appreciated. Needless to say, this year I've pedalled up many, many hills during testing. So let's crack on. While the Carbon Ether 9C gets all the bells and whistles that a carbon bike is expected to have, the aluminium Ether 9 is refreshingly no nonsense in its construction. The most obvious is the external cable routing, a real bonus for those of us like me who don't like fixing and maintaining bikes, and thus benefit from the easiest of cable routing going. With the shock entering into the top tube, there's space for a bottle above the down tube, with a Fidlock bottle system being fitted to our test bike. There's just room for the piggyback shock in there and a 590ml bottle. Around the bottom bracket, there's a removable ISC Geo 5 mount should you wish to ride with a bash guard or chain guide. The 130mm suspension is doled out by a 4 bar linkage that Bird says has been tuned for pedalling efficiency by a higher anti-squat figures, while the progression and mid-stroke supports are there to give pop and control on the descents. Bird's website has a ton of spec details for the frame, including bearing sizes, torques and Loctite specs for all the pivots, which I think is pretty neat. Bird has long been a proponent of long and slack geometry, so there's no surprise to see the Ether 9 being one of the more radical bikes in our 2021 Trail Bike of the Year test. Medium, medium long, large and extra large sizes are offered, and our large has an impressively long 507mm reach, combined with a 65 degree head angle and short 430mm chainstays, to give a wheelbase of 1262mm, which is really quite long. The seat tube sits at 77 degrees, and this is nice and compact at 445mm, meaning me at 182cm, or six foot if I was over the other side of the Atlantic, could easily live with a longer dropper post on offer at the moment. Let's move on to the kit. As I said, usually we have a 3,500 pound limit for trail bike of the year. However, with COVID, Brexit, and massive supply and demand pressures, this test bike came in at 3,850 pounds. Bird, though, are one of a growing number of companies who offer some customization within their bike specking. My test bike came with a very nice pair of DT Swiss XMC 1501 carbon wheels. These have a 30mm internal rim width and understandably a fairly light weight. However, swapping these for a Hope Pro 4 hubbed alloy DT Swiss XM481 wheel set as offered by Bird 
would drop the price to £3,455. Or you could drop it to £3,310 with a pair of DT Swiss M1900 wheels. Both of them have a 30mm internal rim width too, and both add approximately 400 grams to the overall build. I've briefly ridden the bike with a pair of DT Swiss M1900 wheels from a different bike. There's some additional weight largely in the rims, which does ever so slightly dull snappiness under power. However, the ride quality of these wheels isn't so far away from those of the XMC1501 wheels for our review to be unfairly tilted towards the performance of the bird with the fancier, more expensive hoops in place. Continuing this theme, we feel it's a real benefit of the bird buying process that the customer is able to pick and choose a spec from a range of options. It allows one to create a build to either hit a budget, the Ether 9 build start at £2,515.40, or to spec components to suit a locale or riding preference. To this end, I asked for the bike with a Shimano XT drivetrain and my preferred Maxxis tyres for winter woodland testing. A Minion DHR2 at the back and a Shorty at the front, both with their wide trail carcasses and sticky rubber compounds. Now it's fair to say that the Shorty works really well where it does. However, if I was just going to ride at Bike Park Wales, as I did in the video shoot and for some of my testing, I'd have perhaps picked a Minion DHF instead. Bird also offer recons, assegais and dissectors, which pretty much covers most riding styles I reckon. Bird also offer bikes with SRAM, GX and up builds, as well as Dior to XTR Shimano builds. They're currently operating pretty reactively with regards to stock availability, so check on their bike builder for the exact spec and pricing details if you do go and buy an Ether 9. My bike came with a 140mm RockShox Pike Ultimate Fork and a Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock. This means a turn of smooth, reliable and adjustable suspension front and rear, though it would be good if the DT Swiss wheels came with matching torque caps for the forks, as getting those wheels in and out without them can be a bit of a pain. Finishing the bike was a cockpit with race face, bird and gusset parts, as well as a bike yoke revive dropper and a fabric scoop saddle. Again, there are various options to suit whatever you're after. So after all of that, how does it actually ride? Last year, the Bird Ether 7 came third in our Trail Bike of the Year test. The alloy bike impressed us most on tight, twisty tracks, but we felt that its 27.5 inch wheels let it down over the rough stuff. What I really wanted was the same super capable chassis, but with bigger 29 inch wheels. And boy, did Bird deliver. The Ether 9 takes a steadfast pedaling, ultra capable shape and sorted suspension of the Ether 7 and gives it that smooth riding, mile munching and corner railing performance that big wheels offer. Bird is known for their use of longer geometries and the large Ether 9 I had certainly fits that stereotype. With a reach stretching to 507mm and a head angle of 65 degrees, the front wheel is well ahead of the low slung bottom bracket with all the high speed capabilities that that entails. With the front end so far ahead of your centre of mass, it feels unshakable on really steep tracks. At the back though, the 430mm chain stays are tight, keeping the rear wheel tucked into the frame, allowing you to easily get your front wheel up into the air and pull the wheel around tight, steep corners. As such, on steep, twisty, rough and loose trails, the Ether 9 is in its element. The bike lets you instantly pick lines or hold on and grip the bars until you hit the fire road below. On slow, super tech descents, the calm support when the rear wheel drops into a catch berm bolsters your confidence in the bike. It's one of those bikes that's really good at picking its way down a steep technical track with tons of confidence at both high and low speeds. There is a payback from all of this length though when you're tired and need to get the front end moving, as longer bikes need exacerbated body movements to make them react. But the compact rear end of the Bird Ether 9 gives it the edge over similarly long bikes when it comes to manoeuvrability at the end of the day, in my opinion. Should that 500mm plus reach be just too much, the medium long size, between the medium and the large, would have also suited me really well, with a 484mm reach and super short 420mm seat tube. If I was purely looking at downhill capability, the 130mm of travel at the back is noticeably less than the 150mm offered on many other similarly shaped trail bikes. However, with ample progression through its stroke, it was rare that the bird truly struggled with the biggest of impacts. At times, back to back with the smoothest bikes around, there's a touch more feedback through the pedals under braking and over routes. 
However, with a stretched out front end, I never found that it led to a feeling of it being out of control. It's still very calm, even when the back end is being rattled around. What I did like though was how composed the suspension was. So long as you've got the front wheel nicely weighted, the Ether 9 is excellent on flatter, more mellow trails, as the rear suspension is rock solid under pedaling, and really allows you to pump and drive the bike through risers and rollers. Jabbing at the pedals was rewarded with bursts of speed, almost reminiscent of an XC bike, despite the mini and shorty tyre combo I spec'd when building the bike. Uphills I had nothing to complain about, with the steep 77 degree seat angle, less sag than longer travel bikes and solid under power suspension robbing very few of my precious watts. There's plenty of space between the saddle and the bars to ensure your body weight is in the right place to balance rear wheel grip and front wheel precision, and the shorter chainstays help when you need to lift the front wheel up a step or scrabble around a tight uphill switchback. On steep climbs your weight is still in front of the rear axle, but it just needs a slight rearward shuffle to get the front end up so you can place it just where you want. It's not just ride quality though that a bike needs to win Trail Bike of the Year. Though it is a touch over our usual Trail Bike of the Year budget, both still offer exceptional value for money. No doubt using alloy rather than carbon saves a chunk of cash, and that's cash we'd rather spend on the parts than the frame. Ultimate level suspension from RockShox is not to be sniffed at, nor is the full Shimano XT group set including brakes. Ultimately, the DT Swiss XMC 1501 wheels are the item which dragged the bird over budget, though a cheaper yet still more than acceptable pair of DT Swiss alloy hoops would bring the cost right down with, we reckon, not a huge impact on how the bike rides. And with Bird's approach to purchasing, where individual items can be altered at the point of purchase, you can do just that. Yes, carbon frames are very pretty to look at, but I appreciate the user-friendly approach Bird have to building their chassis. External cable routing, threaded bottom brackets, easy to access, adjust and replace bearings and pivots. All these items help making owning a bike much easier in my opinion. Picking our 2021 Trail Bike of the Year winner has been a real struggle, as it is every year. The Canyon Spectral has, arguably, the most sorted frame on test. Both YT's Jeffsy Blades and Propane's Hugh Jane deserve a podium position too, being super enjoyable and incredibly all-rounded in their performance respectively. Perhaps the heart picks the YT while the head the Propane. We'll be bringing you reviews of all of those bikes shortly on the channel. Ultimately though, the bird just pits them all to the line. The Ether 9 delivers in every situation, whether it's a long day in the hills or short blast in the woods. From its geometry to its suspension and value to livability, it's hard to look past the Ether 9. So that's the Bird Ether 9, our 2021 Trail Bike of the Year winner. Am I right in preferring its bigger 29er wheels over the 650B version I tested last year? Let me know in the comments. As ever, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video.